first thoughts when you found out that Khalil got traded? Um, you know, I was – it sort of bothered me a little bit because I stole a lot of information from him. I used to – or I hate to use the word steal, but, <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot from Khalil, man, and um, – he paved the way for a lot of things and showed me what's right and wrong and, you know, how to do certain techniques, how to carry myself as a vet in this league, and I was very appreciative for his presence. How, how uh, challenging do you think the learning curve is going to be here from, you know, the defense you were in last year to this one? You know, honestly, I don't think it'll be that hard. Um, they want us to play fast, physical, you know, have fun, so they took a lot of the thinking load off of our plates, which is something that I'm sure every player will want. and. You know, I'm excited to play fast. So you're in a transition from the college defense to 3-4. Does this sort of take you back to, to your roots of, of what you were playing before you got here? I would say so. Yes, sir. Um, more primarily hand in the dirt, less coverage. That's something um, I worked on a lot in college and played my last two years from five techniques to four eyes and, you know, just getting back in the dirt, getting gritty. Does that part of things feel natural for you now that you're going back to it? Oh, yeah. You know, it is um, – Sort of a little bit natural, you know, I haven't been back to those ways in about two years, but going back now and getting the reps and practice reps that I have, at least after workouts, has been, it's felt more natural, yes. Did you have to put on... Rushing, a passer, rushing the passer that way when you are going back to an alignment where you are with the hand in the dirt? Um, it's actually more comfortable for me. You know, I can get off faster with my hand in the dirt. You know, um, in a two-point, I'm looking around. There's a bunch of movement in the backfield. But I can create more explosion when I'm hitting dirt, getting off on third down, or whatever the case is. Travis, did you have to add any weight to play 10 versus outside linebacker? No, sir. You know, um, the good thing about playing a defensive end, it's sort of around the same weight, uh, usually around 260, 250. And um, I feel like anywhere from the high 250s to 260s, I'm able to still run with the running backs or slot receivers and obviously still rush the passer with the intent that I want. Travis, are there any ways that the 3-4 experience makes you a better football player now in a 4-3, or is that just, are those two completely different jobs and it's just going from one to the other? You know, I think um, for the future of my career, at least, I think it helps because I'm now experienced in the 3-4 and the 4-3, and, um, you know, I'm not getting blindsided. You know, coming from college, coming to a 4-3, it was a little bit different, but with – playing in the three front defense back two years ago and now, you know, circling back around or having my hand in the dirt more often, it feels a little bit more natural. I think it'll help me in the long run. How much did your performance late in the season last year, especially with a lot of the strip sacks, kind of boost your confidence and show you that you deserve a spot in this league? Uh, it boosted my confidence a good amount. You know, I started, I obviously started gaining more confidence. I started becoming more comfortable in my play and my strengths and weaknesses, you know, knowing what I need to use best. And um, I think I think that's overall, that's pretty much it, yeah. How do you pick up this year where you left up last year? That's a different scheme. Uh, the ball is still rolling. The, the confidence is still rolling. Everything is increasing. And, um, you know, I'm overly excited. You know, I almost want to flip this whole thing over and just get get it going to here with y'all, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Do it. Um, <laughs> I want to see that. What are your first impressions of Matt Eberflus, a, a defensive-minded head coach coming in and kind of what he's bringing to that side of the ball? I think he's a great coach. You know, um, everything that he's been preaching from foundation to his principle to, you know, fun, physical, technique, alignment, all those things that these guys are preaching. And I'm hearing it even walking down the halls. It's, I think it's getting inbred into our defense and offense, and I think we're going to have a fantastic year. Travis, I know it's a different side of the ball, different meanings, but what's your view of Justin Fields entering year two and as the quarterback and rising leader of this team? Um, you know, I think Justin has a tremendous amount of potential and I also have um, tremendous <laughs> faith in him. So. I know he'll be able to get the job done. You know, I've seen how he works. I've seen how he studies the playbook. So I think, or not, I think I actually know he'll be able to get the job done. Do you said something different of him now that he's entering the year as the starter and, and as the guy? You know, um, I think Justin has always carried himself the same way. Hard work, determined. You know, he stays in his playbook. In our team meetings, he's at the front. So I think he's very attentive and you know, what he wants to do and the goals that he has this season. Did you talk to Matt? So, do you leave you with any advice or anything? You know, I shot him a text, and, um, you know, he said, 
basically just keep working this all love and you know that's it's a part of the business you know like I said it hurt me to see him go but I'm appreciative for the things that I was able to acquire from him before doing so. How did you find out and where were you? I was shoot what was I doing I was actually at a friend's house and a friend told me and I didn't believe him and it probably took me about two to three minutes to believe him because all I do is joke around with my friends so um, you know when I did see it on my phone it was sort of like you know I can't believe it but then at the same time you know I do understand that it's a business and things happen. That's their idea of a joke? Well no not a, not a joke but I didn't I wasn't expecting it so it caught me off guard yes. Is this coaching staff, you know, being a new staff, is not, at least publicly, has not really said a whole lot about the players they've inherited as far as expectations and, you know, trying to keep things low key. Yes, what, what has this staff told you about your role and what your expectations are? I mean, do you get the feeling that, that you know, they have big plans or are you just fighting for a job? Or what, you know, what has been their explanation to you about what your role is? You know, right now I think it's just um, everybody – not only fighting for a job, but competing with each other. You know, they expect a lot out of every player on this defense. You know, and the main thing is running to the ball. We're going to run to the ball, run past the ball, you know, green through the white, tackling through out of bounds. It's a tremendous amount of things that they have installed and, um, you know, sort of bred into our communication and how we operate just within the past two weeks. So is the expectations are pretty high from everybody on the defense. You get it, how much of a, how much to what extent do you get an impression they believe in you? You know that they they have big plans. You know, you know I as bare as it is, I'm I'm still with Chicago. So if I can get just a little bit of faith, a little bit of belief in me, that's all I need. Travis, with the with the hits acronym, with Matt talking so consistently about being an effort based team, how do you expect that to translate from talking about it all the time in meetings to actually? implementing it when you guys go out and practice? I think it's, um, you know, I think it's just first impression. You know, when I first met the coaches, you know, all they said was his principle. That was the first week going on to second week, his principle, third week. We heard it yesterday. We're hearing it today. So I think it's just sort of like this is what we're about. This is how we do things. This is how we want you guys to do things, and this is how you guys will do things. So I think that's sort of the culture right now, and, you know, I'm really appreciative of it. How, how much are you able to? How much are you able to do that in in the spring when you guys really aren't doing a whole lot on the field? You know, we got um, we got emails. You know, detailing what we need to do to be ready to get back. And Ron was <laughs> most occurred in those emails. So that's that's something I think we weren't blindsided by, and we'll expect to do more often. Indianapolis's defense was predicated off of turnovers. That was like a big thing with Matt Eberflus in the scheme. Has that been something that he's trying to emphasize here, especially during the off-season program as you're just getting started, about like what the bread and butter of this scheme could look like? Oh yeah, yes, ma'am. And it's um, taking the ball away, running to the ball, playing fast, physical, and like I said, having fun. You know, when you take a lot of information off the playbook, it allows you to think less about what you have to do and think more about what you can do. Oh, that's from my um, pass rush to run stop, a bunch of things. So, you know, them implementing that culture into us, I think it's something that's going to carry over for many years. Do you know how many times you've heard the hits principle? Do you have a number? I couldn't even tell you, man. I couldn't even. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, probably over 50. Over 50 and we're only here, you know, not even half or not even the full day, so. It's been pretty, pretty, yeah, tough. <laughs> How do you go about just getting to know a new coaching staff? It must be sort of weird when just a whole new set of guys show up here. You know, I think it's, um, I think you take the approach of just being yourself, and that gives them that sort of comfortability of, okay, you know, this guy's opening up to me, he's being himself, I can be myself. And then that's where the bonds come in, and, you know, you create those relationships because everybody wants to be trusted. You know, I want to trust my coach, my coach, or my coach wants to trust me, obviously, on the field. So, you know, just um, being shy and not speaking and not showing your real personality, that won't really help that that connection between you all. Did you happen to watch Hard Knocks last year or no? Last year, no, sir. Colts? Okay. No, sir, I didn't know, sir. I maybe should watch it, though. Now that you said it was with the Colts, I might have to go back and watch it.